the African continent and countries in it. So uh, right now I'm joined by the gentleman, Mr. Abdurrahman Barte. Yeah, and uh, I'm glad you're able to speak to us right here on business today. Uh, I meant to understand that you are the Africa Airline Association Secretary General. Uh, the first thing, the first question is, where do we stand right now as the aviation sector speaking overall as a continent? Thank you, Mr. Noah, for inviting me to address uh, your audience. Uh, the African Airline Association is a trade organization. We have uh, all big uh, African airlines member. We have 42 uh, members. Uh, where we stand today, uh, you know, uh, aviation in Africa is uh, a, a promise to uh, a big growth during uh, next year. The traffic will double every uh, 15 years. And uh, we need really to prepare our member airlines to face, uh, face uh, this uh, uh, growth uh, ahead. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I may say that uh, many of our members uh, have uh, some uh, difficulties. We have a lot of challenges to, to face uh, an uh, business environment in, uh, in Africa. Yes. And uh, one of our mission is to uh, make sure that uh, African airlines will evolve in a friend, uh, friendly environment business-friendly environment so mm -hmm. that we can uh, improve their uh, performance. Yes, uh, I'm glad you've raised the issue of, you know, the environment. Right now, looking at the African airspace, majority of the flights and what people prefer to travel in, they are not African. And one of the reasons people say is that maybe our own airlines are a little bit more expensive compared to other airlines. Some of these challenges, how are you planning to deal with them for example you know the cost of operation of an airline business in africa is relatively higher compared to other places how are you planning to bring it down thank you for this question because the most critical challenge for african airlines is the cost of operation which are very high first of these costs are the fuel fuel costs are in africa are very high and um, it's, uh, it represents more than 35% of airlines' direct operating costs. And uh, also we have airport charges and navigation charges. At uh, AFRA, we are uh, 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 making uh, lobbying and advocating for uh, lowering of uh, uh, this uh, uh, environment of high, high costs. For fall, for example, in Africa, you can see in many stations where you have a kind of rigidity, rigidity on uh, fall prices mm -hmm. and uh, opacity also. So we are targeting some this kind of station so that we ha can have a sort of transparency uh, 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 about the, uh, the pricing of, uh, of, of fuel for African airlines. Mm -hmm. We have also in some countries where, where they are leaving taxis mm -hmm. on, uh, on fuel. And uh, this is against the Convention of Chicago mm -hmm. because for uh, uh, international uh, flights normally there should be no tax on fuel, for example. Mm -hmm. For that we are working uh, together with uh, IATA the International Air Transport Association mm -hmm. uh, to advocate and to lobby so that we, we, we can have uh, 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 a lower cost of uh, fuel for our member airlines. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I can s tell you also that at uh, AFRA mm -hmm. we have a jet fuel committee. Okay. Every year we have a joint uh, purchase uh, fuel uh, tender. Mm -hmm. uh, for the benefit of uh, our members. Uh, okay. Right. All right. So, Mr. Bante, this conversation we shall continue with it later on. But right now, of course, continue engaging us on our social media platforms. We are asking you, how do you think the government is doing enough to streamline, uh, you know, the ICD issue? But right now, we take a short break. We shall be having the BBC live feed. That is money daily. Then, when you come back, we shall continue with this conversation.